Okay, hi there and welcome to another video. This time we're going to be taking a look at price elasticity of supply and the question is evaluate two factors which determine the degree of price elasticity of supply. Take a look at a couple of technical videos first of all just so you're familiar with the material. Uh, this is a perfectly elastic supply curve. In this situation any change in demand can be met without any change in the price. The supply is perfectly elastic. The polar opposite is when you have a fixed supply. Here is supply is uh, invariant to demand, therefore the supply does not respond at all to a change in the market price. Good example of fixed supply is essentially the capacity of stadiums, concert halls, theatres and cinemas. Here are the Premier League teams, most of them anyway, ranked for the 2018-19 season, including the new apparently fantastic Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which is the biggest stadium in London outside of Wembley. The capacity of the stadium essentially means there's a fixed supply of tickets for each game. Here's a diagram showing a more elastic supply. The coefficient is greater than 1. Contrast that with a more inelastic supply. Coefficient of elasticity of supply is less than 1. So the question is evaluate two factors which might influence the price elasticity of supply. Let's take our first point. One factor that determines the degree of price elasticity of supply is how much spare capacity uh, a business has to operate with. My example here is the building industry after a recession. It's likely that as you're coming out of a downturn, builders, uh, house building firms will be able to hire plenty of extra workers if they want to increase the rate of new home building and that's because of a higher rate of cyclical unemployment. On the other hand the evaluation is that there might also have been a drop in net inward migration perhaps of skilled workers from the European Union or from non-EU countries and that in theory could lead to labour shortages and even though skilled labour might be available other inputs might be in short supply for example essential building materials or construction equipment. So the evaluation point is even though there might have been a recession and there's plenty of spare labour in theory, in practice net migration could have had an offsetting effect. My second point is that another factor affecting elasticity of supply is the length of the production period. So if you think about farming more generally, there is typically a growing period for arable crops, there's an essential time delay between planting the crops and harvesting them. And unless you can store surplus crops, perhaps store grains and others, and maintain their quality so that they keep their price, then the supply of some crops might be price inelastic in the market. However, a counterpoint, an evaluation point, is that we're seeing quite significant advances in farming technology. And uh, the impact of climate change affecting many countries means that you can now grow crops in countries including the UK for nearly all months of the year. Uh, storage has become more, easily, uh, more easy and accessible. And globalisation has also increased the supply capacity of imported foodstuffs to meet changing demand. So globalisation, shortening time production periods, better storage facilities, all of these things actually help to increase the supply elasticity in this kind of market. So there we go, a bit of a vision in this video on two factors which determine the degree of price elasticity of supply. 